What's going on guys, Bladezilla here, and today we're taking a look at this gorgeous uh, collaboration piece from Sheer Goroff in carbon fiber. Uh, this is the Paro. So it's been around a few years now, but uh, one has come in and I don't believe I've done a video on this one yet. And figured, you know what, what better time than now to talk about uh, just another cool um, knife that's going to be hitting the store here at some point and uh, you know talk about it do some comparisons with some of the later technology and uh, kind of wrap things up with uh, some good times so let's get into it just a reminder to check out my web store bladezilla.ca which I have conveniently pulled up on my phone uh, everything here is in Canada ready to go priced accordingly and fun fact we just picked up wingman EDC and uh, are actually line priced on that in uh, US dollars perfectly so we are the first and only Canadian distributor of Wingman EDC. So lots of stuff there in stock, ready to go. But otherwise, check me out, bladezilla.ca. Uh, nice little quick plug. But more than anything, um, you know, grab a cup of coffee, grab a whiskey, grab uh, a water, club soda. If you're like me, big into the club sodas, you know, kick, get one, kick back, relax, and uh, let's enjoy the next uh, few minutes together. So sheer more peril. Collaboration, collaboration with Dmitry Sinkovich. So it's a Sinkovich design, as is written on the blade here. And as should be evident by the cool tool there, the bit, the hardware. It's always been a kind of uh, triangular, oof, triangular bit, and uh, really cool. So let's get into that. Let's, let's get some measurements on this guy. And, uh, and talk about it, because I think we've got a real cool knife here that is a little bit underrated, I think, in the Shiro lineup compared to some of the other pieces. So, let's do it. There we go. So, coming in at 8 inches, uh, 8, three, eight and 5 eighths, so a little bit bigger. Uh, no, that's about right, 8 and 5 eighths, yeah, that's about right. Uh, blade length of 3 and 3 quarters, somewhere in that conversation. And handle four and three quarters so you know it's a size it's a large size knife which is awesome uh, conveniently and these are these are my dimensions obviously I don't know what the actual dimensions are I don't have a spec sheet or anything I believe this guy's Vanex uh, I don't know if it's written on here anywhere I'm doing this off the cuff by the way guys just so you are aware if I do make mistakes but I thought this was Vanex 37 and uh, it's supposed to be three and three quarter but you know good size Really good size. Multi-row bearing system, which I'm assuming would be written somewhere in here. Oh, uh, is it on the tab? I guess it would have to be on the titanium internals, which, by the way, as you can see, is a liner lock. And underneath the backspacer, I believe they made 200 of these, so there should be a serial number under here. I thought this was like 98 or something. 99? I can't see what the camera says. 98, close. There it is, number 98. So they are stamped underneath there, which is awesome. As well, and then I guess while you're seeing this, you've kind of got some centering detail uh, next to that as well, which is awesome. Underneath the backspacer, which seemingly goes up quite a while. Quite a long way for a sheer bore off, which I think is really cool. You can see, obviously, all the uh, detail work on the carbon fiber, which, uh, you know, is not carbo tie, obviously. Imagine that on one of these, you can do some cool things. But the main thing here, the main takeaway is, like, there's kind of, like, you know, it's, it's really rolled to fit your palm nicely. And your fingers kind of go on top of this, like, trapezoidal box all the way around, and it really firmly holds in your hand nicely. So that's pretty cool. It's nice detail work. Everything's rounded along all the edges, which is awesome. And then we do have, I was talking the, the triple bit, it's, it's called kind of the Sinkovich pivot, but uh, you do you are required to have a Sinkovich tool to take this knife apart, adjust, etc., which you can get uh, a lot of the times it's just like a pen tool. Or get like a CCK a Stellar Touch, that'll have the bits in the, in the tool there. 
but uh, it's kind of just you know three little holes together and one in a triangular pattern nothing too crazy but there's enough of them out there now that that shouldn't be a huge problem it is a flipper obviously so instead of a nice big thick flipper tab you're kind of getting a little quantum vibe here where it's kind of built in a little bit not at quite the same angle but built into the tip there and just sticks up enough with kind of some roll jimping around there so it's the closest thing it, it's almost like it reminds me of the brown uh, fsd but on the other side it's kind of like that pretty simple nice and smooth running on multi-row bearings you've obviously got the shear gore off bear on the blade a nice deep section cut out which it looks beautiful and that same jimping you're flipping is obviously on the top on the other side same same pattern right and then as we go down the blade we get a nice pinched in portion of it about halfway down running all the way which is beautiful sometimes this isn't done well you'll get like cutouts that bleed out onto the top done really well and then kind of narrows down and then holds that right up to the tip for some integrity on the end some integrity the kind of bio like pivot Sinkovich kind of center pivot there if it wants to focus um, you know you, you look at this and you're probably looking at it on video like I am right now and you think that it sticks up huge but let's roll that and look it doesn't stick up like at all it's really nice 3d look to it very unique and as the light rolls around the carbon fiber you can kind of see it also rolls around all the different angles on that pivot which is so so sick so i love that you know the first time i saw this knife i was like oh, i don't know it looks it looks a lot smaller than you'd think but in hand it's it's a full-size knife like extra extra large gloves here and it's a full size knife all the way around beautiful ergonomics very lightweight but you're you're really used to that flipper tab kind of sticking out more than it is which allows you to kind of get a grip anywhere that you want to you can kind of just choke right up to the no choil right so you can choke up to wherever you want it's really unique really cool very cool design smooth obviously centered beautifully with that little part that uh, underneath the backspacer which obviously just kind of exam uh, exemplifies the centering of it and a clip that uh, you know for me that looks like a long clip um, and it's curved obviously 3d milled um, you know you're getting uh, where does it end about there about that much sticking up with your lanyard hole which is cool but it's not in your pocket so very um, very ergonomic that way but I'm curious why they did this nice long curve with a very deep clip that's a little longer than normal it's you know a little over I'd say 60 percent versus like 40 of a traditional shiro but cool nonetheless and I also dig how the backspacer kind of pops up a little bit almost looks like a fin on like a shark or something how it just kind of sticks up just a little bit that's a nice little touch but we're going to do some comparisons so i'm going to grab a couple here and take a look and uh, see what we can kind of get into here so let's do that here now so the obvious uh the obvious uh, comparison would be sigma from shiro which is a little more slicey and a little more um how can i a little more persian so you know they're they look you know they're, they're, they kind of came out similar timelines but um you know carbon fiber a nice swoopy blade and whatnot but uh these these are the two that kind of go really really well together um i will compare it let's move this one up top here uh this is like the the, the hadion's moment to shine with the neon hadion cd you know the carbon bros just hanging out having a good time uh but very very cool nonetheless to have three carbon handled like actual carbon handled knives 
Um, I will grab a couple others as we kind of go down. The Vegas V cards. This is the Zerk version, which is also a Sinkovich knife as well. I will grab the Bio, another Sinkovich knife. That's a Bio Dark. Beautiful knife. I've got a Bio, uh, where are we here? Bio Light as well. Very similar knives, just different texturing, different color, same steel. And there, that should give you a good idea of the sizing as well on the uh, the angle of the camera, those are the same knife top and bottom, but look very different size-wise, which is funny, in my opinion. Uh, F95s, we can grab that as well. Up top, that's an F5 Silk Slim. Love that knife. Got a Quantum Blue Custom Division here which once again is on the bottom of the screen and will look massive comparatively, but if I go ahead and flip those two around, now the F5 will also look huge. That's what she said. Uh, love the Quantum Blue. I've got one in the store as I'm filming this right now. Uh, I don't know how long that's gonna last, but just as a heads up, I probably will put this video out sooner than later. Uh, I've got a another collaboration piece, Mayo Dr. Death as well. Um, let's get into some of the older stuff. I've got an F95 CD. I've done a video on this one as well, which is super cool. Uh, our F95 NL, another great knife that has stood the test of time. And then uh, what else can I grab on the Shiro side here? Uh, Kami I've got, which is another Sinkovich knife. And uh, trying to get as much Sinkovich content together that I can. But I do have two new knives beside me that uh, I don't think I've shown on the channel yet that I will quickly put together here. And I do have a Russian Overkill. After I sold the Russian Overkill that was on the night on the site earlier today, that didn't last long. But uh, yeah, there, there's a couple good pieces there to kind of show size. Uh, do we want to get into some of the cool new stuff? Sure, let's do it. So I'm going to move this down, and uh, or maybe, yeah, that's fine. Introducing the 111 Starship. I'll have to do a video on this, but if you've made it this deep into it, you deserve to see a new knife. So there's the 111 uh, Custom Division Starship. You've probably seen that in a lot of recent pictures. That has now been released. Custom Division, Magna Cut, absolute beast of a knife. There you go, and that will dwarf all of these. And I'm super, super pumped to uh, to a video, do a video on that one soon because uh, it's that'll be that'll be coming real real soon, I bet, uh, because there's not too many of them out there yet. And as I open up one more box here, uh, another one that I have not shown on the channel, the Astrum Custom Division, which uh, I don't know how that's going to look on camera, but there you go. Another super cool colored knife that uh, is very bright in person. It, it might look green in a lot of photos. It's actually very, very bright teal. And uh, that will be an interesting one to do a video on at some point. Uh, also Magna Cut. And there we go. So there's your, there's your three and maybe even to put it like this to kind of show the true sizing because this one is actually smaller than this one, but will appear bigger based on the angle. So there's there's three cool knives. Um, God, it still feels waxy. Um, this one, I, you know, you've probably seen a video of the Astrum SR Sprint Run. I'm excited to do a video on this one because the, the milling's a little more coarse. Uh, portions of it are the same, but uh, another very cool knife. And uh, that one just walked in the door. So uh, there's your Astrum <laughs> Custom Division knife that I didn't expect to put in the video, which is why I was frantically unwrapping it, but uh, also the 111 Starship. Lots of cool activity on the milling front there. But, uh, you know, that'll probably be coming in the next few weeks. Um, or next week, probably. Uh, anyway, so back on this, I uh, apologize. ADHD, I imagine. 
the peril. Let's get into uh, let's get into it. So fit in hand, really really nice. Um, you know, good jimping, no issues. Great lightweight blade. Seems to be balanced. A little, little handle heavy, I'd say. Um, the pivot obviously is not anything that sticks out like you think it would. Not at all. Multi row bearings, which I don't know if this one actually has the the Mickey Mouse style. So kind of instead of um, the pinwheel style, one, two, three in a row. It's kind of like, you know, Mickey Mouse ears with a nose. Kind of like the Sinkovich pivot. Uh, like I said, I'm doing this off the top of my head, so I don't really know the spec sheet. I don't have it in front of me. Um, liner lock, which is just solid. It's a very unique knife. Um, it's a very unique, and it kind of reminds me a lot. Like, I see a lot of uh, the strip in this. I see a lot of some of the other Sinkovich... Uh, I think they're called the flippers. I see a lot of that in this. The lanyard hole I love to, and uh, you know, sometimes people, myself included, get a little turned off with the stellar seeing through the hole. Um, but it works on this. It works really, really well. The hook and the handle as well on the back is very cordonal-esque from from, uh, from Dimitri. They always seem to have a nice hook on the handle that really holds your hand in well but they nail the uh, the ergos on your fingers not like they're getting split on this little spot on the handle here so nicely and you're getting like like look fingers lock there a nice roll to split them and then almost another spot for the front all in one little handle just boom 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 three tiers super cool definitely a fan Smooth action, really smooth action. Nothing to shake a stick at. And then those little baby ones up here, those are cool too. Um, I'm wondering how they attach that clip. That must be from inside out, uh, hidden behind the back spacer. So you must have to take this off to get the clip off because that is kind of in front of a screw there, which is cool. Everything else is kind of screwed inside. The milling internally on the carbon is non-existent. Obviously, it's carbon. They don't tend to really do that often. It's really difficult. On some of the custom divisions they do, on like the Stellaris, there seems to be some milling in there, but just a nice smooth, you know, if you're if you're looking for a knife that, you know, it does seem to kind of retain its value right around that, right now, I think they're 1800 US. Um, but there's plenty of them out there. They're, you know, versus going up into the R.J. Martin stuff, going into the Tom Mayo stuff that seems to be almost hitting 3,000 U.S. It's a good price point for a collector. And, you know, if you're a Sinkovich guy, I don't know why you wouldn't want it. Because it's so cool. It's just light. Uh, I'm going to grab uh, a weight on this as well. Because why not? Because we got time. We always got time on this channel. So let's get that dialed in, zero that off. Any guesses? I'm saying it's three ounces. 3.4. Oh, let's move that up so you can actually see it. Make sure it's zeroed. 3.4, and for my Canadian hombres, 96 grams. So, you know, you're at the ounce to, uh, to inch ratio. If anyone doesn't know the ounce to inch, that is the uh, blade length should be the weight of the, the knife. And that's kind of just a rule of thumb. So, for example, if it's a four inch blade, ideally four inches or less, or a three inch blade, you, you get the picture. So, three and a half inch blade, or what I say, three and three quarter inch blade. Um, so there you go. You're well under that by almost half is cool. I just want to look at that clip a little bit. So you get a nice gap underneath it. Real long. I'm kind of wondering why they did such a long clip on this. But you get the same contouring on the back. The, the aligner lock ability as well is going to be great for lefties. They're going to appreciate this knife. All right, nothing too crazy. But another another great addition. Honestly, another great addition. The fin on the back, that just looks so good. And then jimping, I didn't even notice that on the back here. I'm blind. Anybody know the reason for that? 
Like, why did they do that? Is it so that if you hold it backwards, you can... Maybe that's why they do that? That must be. That would have to be why. Really cool knife. Very light. But anyway, back to that clip. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out why they did it so long. And it must just be because, like, if you look at the, the milling, there's kind of a bit of a... A bit of an arch here. So maybe they're just matching that arch of that whole milling situation there. Just kind of match it and make it make the eye the the sight lines look a little smoother. Eh, it could be it. You know, even on this back pivot you get the um or the tool side, you get that cool uh, like bio pivot vibe on that as well, which is probably not very easy to do, I imagine. So they must have to drill that hole and then do the shaping after. And once again, as I roll the knife, it does not pop up. It's uh, It does a little, obviously, but it does not pop up like you think it would. I want to take a quick look at the milling on this uh, as well. Just a well done collaboration. Yeah, lots, lots of detail. The closer you look, there's a lot of micro milling on that lock as well. You know, as far as sheer Goroff collaboration goes, like, this is, uh, this is pretty basic, I guess, for them. Because I think this guy, the Paro, when did they do the Paro? That's gotta be, like, 2018-ish? 2019, maybe? Like, it's an older knife. Older. Not oldest or anything like that. It's not like my F95NL, so... You know, it's still pretty early, I'd say, for a lot of the collaboration pieces, but if you compare it with like the Russian Overkill or the Mayo, there's a lot more they've done to that knife, which is why they command higher resale, and there's less of them. But Vanex, let's be honest, if it is Vanex, I think it is, um, Vanex is not very common, which is a super sexy material too. I guess I guess the eyesore here is you get the the detent ball hole on the blade that's poking up a bit, kind of like some of the other knives. You know, I could see that being a common complaint. Not everyone likes to see that, but you know, mainly because things like pocket lint and whatever, or if you're cutting things, it will get in there. Plug that up over time. But let's be honest, I don't think anyone's actually using these. Just a beautiful knife. Nice collaboration piece, especially with the Paro uh, being what it is, you know, and having the Sigma there. Like, I, I think that's those are cool. Um, they should almost be together as a pair. Oh, get it? Nice little, nice little cleverness of me there. I'm just kidding. Um, you know, they look really good together. Very two very similar knives, similar age. Um, you know, that's that's pretty cool to have the Sigma in the house at the same time. And just to show this knife as well, while I have you here, I'll have to do a video on this, but you can see all the milling on the carbon externally. And then you should have the pivot on the back. Very, very similar design-wise. Tab lock or liner lock, whatever you want to call it. This one has a bevel on it. Nice big beveled handle. More in tune with like a kitchen knife kind of style slicer. Two very different designs. But similar action-wise, similar weight-wise, I'll have to do a video on the, uh, the Sigma at some point here. But uh, nonetheless, a real cool knife. Looking forward to uh, playing with this. And then actually behind the clip, you can kind of see there's, I think, three screws, normally anyway. I don't know if you can see that. You should be able to. There's, they should be back there. Three screws that actually hold the liner in place. And I don't know if those are sink bits. I would assume they are. But they would be right under there. You get one, two, three. And I'll try to show that with the camera. Very cool placement. There you go. See them hiding back there? Just like that. One, two, three. But can't see them virtually at all uh, from anything other than that angle. That's so funny that they do that. Um, I don't know. I wonder if they did this knife today, How if they would do it any differently. Or if they would keep it the way it is. But, you know, obviously Shergorov is not the one designing it, they're the one manufacturing it, and Sikovich is the one uh, working with Sergei on kind of 
that process and let me say they've got it pretty dialed in because the bios that came after whew, those are just some of the best knives in the business so beautiful knife love it i think it's going to be a great addition and uh and once again, you know, the Sinkovich stuff just never seems to disappoint. Uh, you know, it's I, at one point I'd love to check out like a, a full custom sink Sinkovich knife because I've never actually experienced the uh, the real deal. And I think that would be something special to finally get to experience. So, um, yeah, that could be fun. All right, well, that is it, guys. I will not keep you any longer. That is the Pero um, from Shirgoroff and Dmitry Sinkovich in a collaboration piece. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed that. I, I feel like I'm rambling today. Haven't had enough coffee. I've had too much water. So I've got to go take a pee. Uh, apologize about that, but I, it's true. Just being honest. Um, appreciate you guys stopping by, checking this knife out, checking out some of the other collectibles. If you have any questions, leave them below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, share, uh, all that good stuff. Visit bladezilla.ca, where a lot of the knives featured on this channel are available to purchase. Um, or at least check out a library of specs, knives, pictures, video, you name it. It's on there. So uh, that's it. Appreciate you guys stopping by. And until next time, I will see you later in the week. All right. See you guys. Peace.